Your company's future success demands agile, flexible, and resilient operations. I'm your host, Daphne Luchtenberg, and you're listening to McKinsey Talks Operations, a podcast where the world's C-suite leaders and McKinsey experts cut through the noise and uncover how to create a new operational reality. In a recent episode, we talked about technology and supply chains and how digitization is accelerating across the operations value chain. We were very fortunate to be able to include an excerpt from an interview with Sanjid Biswas, who is the CEO and the co-founder of Samsara, a company that brings AI solutions to infuse safety, efficiency, and sustainability into logistics operations. Today, we're bringing you a bonus episode of McKinsey Talks Operations with more content from the great conversation that Sanjit had with my colleague, Renee Jackson. They talked about how digital solutions can be integrated into new, previously hard-to-reach physical environments, such as delivery networks and field maintenance operations. And they describe a number of real-life use cases that illustrate the opportunity that's up for grabs. We open up with an introduction from Sanjit, what his business set out to do, and how they're serving clients today. Let's listen in. I'm Sanjit Biswas. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Samsara. Samsara was founded to be a technology company that partners with people in physical operations across different industries, certainly a lot in logistics and supply chain, but we also work with construction companies and energy utilities and local governments to basically make their operations smarter. The way we do that is by gathering sensor data, doing things like training AI models to find insights in the data, and then providing the ability for frontline workers to take action based on those insights. That's what actually generates the outcomes people are looking for. We see reductions in the number of preventable accidents, for example. Our customers often, after deploying our technology, will see anywhere from a 20 to 80% reduction in accidents because they can change their behaviors to be safer. We see huge improvements in efficiency. So when you digitize your process and your workflow, it saves people time. 30 seconds here, two minutes there. We see about 260 million workflows run through our system every year. The net result is we're saving customers a lot of time. And then same thing when it comes to sustainability. Once you have all this data about your logistics and supply chain operations, you can be a lot smarter about how you're planning your day-to-day operations, how you're operating your equipment. And those little details matter. If you can save anywhere from 2 to 5% on fuel, that's a massive decrease in your carbon emissions. It's also a huge cost savings measure in the millions for a lot of our customers. I wonder if we can double-click a little bit into the safety element. Maybe that's a good example. I'd love to bring in a customer example. How is generative AI impacting your customers? What's been the ROI and value that it's bringing? And it would be wonderful if you could maybe talk through a couple specific examples, whether it's safety or otherwise. Let's start with safety. One of our customers and partners for many years has been DHL. We work with their DHL Express division and their supply chain division, and they care tremendously about the safety of their front line. They have thousands of delivery drivers working every single day. They operate in all different kinds of weather conditions, all times of day. For them, making sure that front line is safe is paramount. They already had safety coaching and safety programs, but they were lacking some of the operational data and context. In other words, what was going on out on the road? Were there things like mobile phones distracting their drivers, notifications, those kinds of things? And could they basically be safer? They put our technology out in the field four or five years ago and immediately saw a reduction in the number of events that were happening out on the road. So they got into about 26% fewer accidents when they measured year over year, and they're operating a massive scale. Some of those accidents they were able to prevent were the most severe. So their costs were actually cut roughly in half, 49% reduction. And then going back to that frontline workforce, they appreciated the investment DHL made in their safety. They saw that this was part of a cultural transformation that was for the positive. They were recognizing drivers for defensive driving, for doing a great job. Crazy things happen out on the road. They were able to really showcase how great of a job people were doing in the field. And the net result was that their driver turnover rate, the labor turnover, got cut in half. So we view that as a win-win-win. The frontline were kept safer on the road fewer accidents, so less cost to the organization, and a cultural win for the whole company. So that's a great example around safety. But again, very large, complex supply chain company, very technologically advanced. But there's always more you can do if there's a specific purpose in mind. Are there other areas outside of safety where you're seeing surprising impact? Once you have data about what's happening in your field operations, you can really start optimizing them. And some of this is fairly obvious. If someone was able to do a ride-along with every driver 
you'd say, well, why are you taking that route? Or can we make that start of day, end of day process a little bit faster? It's only when you can see it at scale that you realize how much operational efficiency potential there is. And that happens across different companies in different ways because it's nuanced. But the net result is you can save time on things like the start of day, end of day workflow. There's a lot of paperwork that has to happen going on shift, doing a walk around inspection of your truck, seeing what's on board, typing in information from bills of lading. All of this stuff can be automated and digitized. And customers are at different points in the digitization journey, but all of these are time savings. So that's on the efficiency side. And then many of our customers are asset heavy operations. Actually, almost all of our customers have thousands or tens of thousands of assets. Many of those assets are underutilized. So that could be construction equipment. It could be trailers. It could be tractors, the trucks themselves could be pallet jacks. And so this is something where if you try to do it with pen and paper, it's very hard to figure out what's used and what's not. Because you ask a regional manager, they're going to say, I'm using everything, don't take it. (laughs) If you put a sensor on it, you might say, hey, that trailer hasn't moved in 30 or 90 or 180 days. Let's reallocate. If you need one, we're going to move one to you or we're going to rent one, but we don't need to own it. And so many of our customers are seeing 10, 20% of their assets are underutilized. They can essentially remarket, sell those assets off, raise tens of millions of dollars of capital that was already sitting on their balance sheet, but put it to work in a much more productive capacity. 100% that makes a lot of sense. So there's clearly this element around productivity increasing. And I think we all understand the imperative around productivity needing to increase. So that's very interesting. There is, I think, just looking at the near term value versus the long term value of Gen AI, there's a sense that Gen AI is overestimated in the near term and then underestimated in the long term. Do you agree with that sentiment? I think almost every major technology shift goes through this hype cycle. If I think back to the age of the internet back in the 90s when the World Wide Web was launching, people thought, hey, this is going to be really big. It's going to transform everything really fast. And we ended up with the dot-com bubble. The net result was right that everything was going to change. It just took 20, 25 years, not two to five years. But to your point around long-term transformations happen, that's absolutely true. We saw that with the World Wide Web and the internet. We saw it then happen again with mobile. Everyone went through the iPhone moment, a lot of excitement right in the late 2000s. And then there was a bit of a moment where people said, are we overinvested? Have we gone too far on apps and things like that? But now you step back and it's hard to imagine operating without your smartphone or smart device. So these things definitely go through hype cycles, but the long-term value is there. And so there's a question around pacing. There's a question around really finding practical areas of value. Then the change management, how do you actually get the stuff out there? I think Gen AI is in that early stage. We're going through the steepest part of the hype cycle. Many people are right that this stuff is not ready for prime time. Maybe it's not worth over-investing or investing too fast. But I do think it's a change that's happening and it's for the better. And the practical utility here is, again, making sense of vast amounts of data. You can collect all the data you want, put it in a database, but it's not doing you any good if you can't find the insights and take action from it. Gen AI makes the data more insightful and more accessible. So now you can say, this is the process that we need to change, or you know what, a bot could do this workflow instead of having a person sit down and do it. And every leader I've spoken to wishes their team was larger. Everyone's looking for leverage. They're looking for ways to be smarter. I think Gen AI is a new tool in the toolbox. Agreed. So when you go into an organization and you're sort of assessing alongside that leader what it is they are trying to accomplish, where do you typically begin? Most organizations we work with have a project in mind. They've identified a problem, an area, an opportunity for improvement. What we tend to do is focus on that initial project and say, how do we help reduce the number of accidents, for example, or How do we wrap our arms around the sustainability mandate of transitioning to EVs? How can data help with that? That involves a practical trial process. They'll actually go deploy anywhere from a few dozen to a few hundred of our devices, start getting the data into the cloud, start trying it on the front line to see, is this going to work? That de-risks the whole project. And that's something that we can do in a matter of weeks or even months. And that, I think, is very different than how tech projects have historically worked. If you're thinking about The most extreme cases in ERP upgrade, those can take anywhere from five to 10 years, and they're just very arduous. That's completely different than what's now possible, where you have plug and play hardware, easy to use apps, integrations that just work out of the box. 
So going back to how customers do this, it almost always involves a pilot and very practical focus of this is the problem we're trying to solve. And let's use technology to solve the problem versus the other way around of here's the technology we have. Let's see what problems we can solve. That doesn't tend to work. And typically when you go in, have you found that some of your customers have tried this before and maybe it failed and then you're coming in to do a little bit of patchwork? Or do you find that your customers are pretty early in their Gen AI journey and they're starting from scratch? I think most companies are early in the Gen AI journey. If you step back, we all went through the chat GPT moment maybe two Thanksgivings ago. We're talking about this technology has really hit the main stage in the last two years. A lot of our customers, however, have been digitizing their operations more generally. So there, what you'll see are a lot of raw ingredients or building blocks. They may have systems that they've stood up, but they're siloed. They're not talking to each other. They may have apps that they've deployed that are a little bit clunky. And so they're saying, how can I use this Gen AI moment to bring all this stuff together to make it a system of record that's across the physical operation and then operate on that data in a more natural way using natural language or with new kinds of apps or workflows? So that's the context that we see is siloed systems, kind of various points in digitization, uh, some pen and paper process that's still out there, but a lot of new apps, but the ones that tend to be siloed a little bit. And then from there, we say, let's use the system of record concept to bring it all together. Let's integrate across the board and then use new technologies like Gen AI to unlock the value. That's again, how it happens. So it's, it's the problem, which is fragmented siloed systems, and the solution is consolidation and then using new technology like Gen AI. Based on the examples you shared, it feels like Samsara is absolutely in the near term, helping companies find the value and driving real, tangible, measurable impact. One thing that one of our experts said recently is that the future of generative AI is really exciting, that essentially he sees Gen AI as helping to unnerd supply chains, which I think is just a funny way to think about it. But I also think back to your point on frontline workers, the truck driver being able to use the data to operate better, more safely, more efficiently. I think that's probably true. What do you see as the future of Gen AI in your space within logistics? Things that you are not yet seeing, but that you know there's potential for unlock. One great example of a Gen AI unlock is around maintenance data. So it's not something a lot of us think about day to day, but if you think about your supply chain, it's powered by thousands or maybe tens of thousands of trucks. And those trucks or even trailers will have fault codes, check engine lights, warnings, things like that that come off of them. Historically, people have captured this data or ignored it because it's too much to process and it's kind of cryptic. It'll have like a engine fault code that'll be something like P0245. You have to get a service manual out. You have to ask a diesel mechanic, what does that mean? Is this a critical fault? Great example of how Gen AI can help. We can now take those fault codes in and decode them. Say, hey, this is a particulate filter that if just swapped out, might cost $300, but it'll prevent a $10,000 unplanned downtime event three weeks down the road. That's exciting level of insight that wasn't very practical before. So we're starting to see companies start to leverage this data that they already had. The sensors were already on the trucks. No one was doing anything with the data, but Gen AI can be that unlock. And then you can do it at scale. You could start being proactive about it and say, which of my trucks should I rotate out for maintenance? You can do that in a data-driven way instead of a schedule-based way. That, again, feels very obvious, feels very low-hanging, but it's a tremendous area of ROI or value, and it helps prevent a lot of unplanned downtime. It helps improve asset lifespans and really save costs in the whole system. And it's, again, just unlocked by the data that was already there. Anything else that you're kind of seeing, maybe even challenges you're faced with, or an exciting experience you had recently with a customer, anything that we haven't touched on that you'd like to add? I think there's a lot to be excited about in this moment. As you said, many companies have invested in digitizing their operations, but have seen varying amounts of value come from it. I think it's important to have a positive outlook on what might be possible. It's hard to imagine going backwards, taking digital technology out and going back to pen and paper. It's clearly way more efficient to go digital. The question is, what are the pockets of value that may be unrealized? And so 
when it comes to back office reporting and compliance, a number of our customers are reporting out on scope one and scope two emissions. It's something their customers are asking for. Well, it turns out you can get rid of those Excel pivot tables and spreadsheets that are used to go calculate that and have a system do it. But you have to have a modern system. So those are the kinds of real world problems that we're excited to go tackle. I think the tools are evolving so quickly, whether it's generative AI or big data warehouses, there's lots of different kind of enabling technologies here. But there's room for upside if you look for it carefully and very practically. So what I've encouraged leaders to do is spend time with their operational teams, understand where the frustrations are, where is there a lot of manual repetitive process, and then go take on a digitization process instead of the other way around. If you work backwards from what winning looks like, it can be really exciting. If you're just trying to digitize everything, it can be really frustrating. So that would maybe be the high level. It was so powerful to hear the different areas where AI and technology is making a difference. I particularly recognize the comments about the hype cycle of Gen AI and the opportunities to break through siloed functional areas and create stronger synergies. And let's face it, anything that's going to get packages delivered more efficiently has got to be a bonus for both companies and for their customers, including me. You've been listening to McKinsey Talks Operations with me, Daphne Luchtenberg. If you like what you heard, subscribe and stay tuned. Another great episode starts now.